Last week, I did a basic overview of armor paint. If you have not seen that video, please make sure that you watch it before watching this one. There is a link in the upper right hand corner and also in the description below. Today, I will be taking a deeper dive into this low priced PBR application. So last week I talked about the idea that there's a paintbrush tool, there's an eraser tool, there's a fill tool, there's a decal tool, and there is a text tool. The paintbrush tool is pretty simple. If I open up the nodes here on this particular material, maybe change that, uh, I can immediately start painting, okay? If I want, I can always add more layers. So I would say add a new layer. And then when I paint, I'm painting on this layer here instead of this layer here. And then I could add another layer and I could paint on that layer and it is being painted there. There are blend modes that are available. So for example, if I didn't want to uh, have it as a mix mode, which would be like a normal blend mode in HitFilm, I would use one of these others. And these are all the same as the previous. Let me give you an example. Say for example, I have this model of the FX Home logo. And I go ahead and drop on a copy of this material, which is a marble material. And it has a very nice looking um, specular reflectivity to it, uh, as well as a nice texture, the whole nine yards. You can see that it created that layer. If I were to make changes to this node, for example, if I were to remove that, then it would remove uh, it in real time. Anything that I would do to this material will automatically be changed in real time. If I want to go ahead and make that into its own layer, then I would right click and say, make it a paint layer. All right. Now, for example, I might add a new layer and I might just using this particular node, fill that with purple. Uh, however, if I didn't want it to mix over the top, I wanted it to say, for example, overlay over the top, then I could create a sort of very nice looking um, mixture of the two. Now you'll notice that because it's on top, it has lost its the uh, the reflectivity and the specularity, but I could very easily add those in to this node, the same that I did in the other one. And as a result, I could come up with a pretty nice looking layer this way. And then it will, you'll notice, retain the specularity and the texture and all that kind of stuff. One of the interesting aspects of the fill is that if you have any other one, you have certain things that you can um, change. But on the fill, one of the things you can do is you can change it from filling the entire object to simply faces. Let me show you what I mean. If I add a new layer here and I open this up and you can see that there is a UV map with faces on it. So I might want to fill the whole thing with this metallic color first. Okay. And then perhaps if I added a new layer to this layer, perhaps I would want to only fill the faces and maybe I'll fill that with a blue color or I mean a wooden color, right? This way. So that way I have uh, this cube that has a very nice looking uh, metallic edging, but with a wooden face. Looking at the text, I can go ahead and create, for example, a new uh, node. Let's just make it blue. And then I can go ahead, adding a new layer. I'm going to hit the hotkey seven, which is on top. And I will change this to a one and I'm going to hit the hotkey F and make this bigger by sliding my mouse over. I think I'll back up just a bit and I'm just going to stamp that right there. Okay. Then if I hit control seven, that's on the bottom and I think I'll make that a six. And now I can stamp that there. Uh, maybe a one. Uh, if I hit the hotkey one, then it brings me to one side and control one brings me to the other side. Stamping that and then three will bring me to the other side and control three will bring me to the last side. 
and I have fairly quickly been able to create um, a very lovely looking dice cube that is made out of wood with a metallic edging there. See? So it is very quick. It is very easy to use this um, software or this little application. So now the question then becomes, how do you export these textures? Well, it's very simple. You say file, you can export the mesh, you can export the textures. When you say export textures, it will give you your choice. They can be 2K, 4K, 16K, right? They can be in PNG or JPG files. Um, you can use only certain layers if you want, and you can make it 8-bit, 32-bit, or 16-bit, right? And then there are different sort of presets for different um, engines as well. Um, so it's very simple. And then you just say export and boom, you, you select it and save it and that sort of a thing. If you have an object that has multiple uh, different things like my table from last week, it has a leg, it has four different legs and then just the tabletop. Well, then you can select and say, I only want this to be for the tabletop, right? And now that met metallic top is only on the table. Okay, if I decide then that maybe this one I want to be not shared, but on only leg one, then I can go ahead and make it on leg one. Now, notice that that is going the wrong direction. That's fine. I can always rotate the UV 90 degrees and do it again. And yeah, now that's how I want it. Now that I have painted my surface, I will want to go ahead and export the textures. But if there are more than one mesh in your model, then you will have to export those individually. Pretty simple to do. All you have to do is just select one, and then it only shows the layers that are in relationship to that one. And then you can either, again, come over and say export the textures, or you can export right from here, and it will give you the same thing. Then I would select a different one, and I would say export that and so on and so forth. So it's actually pretty easy to export those individually. So that way, when you bring them into HitFilm, you can do them individually. One of the neat things that you can do is use this tool. It is a color picker. I'm going to click on that. If I open up the, uh, the layer here, the texture layer, uh, and then I start looking on this, for example, if I click there, you can see where I am on the um, thing. If I click here, then it will show me where it is. You can see this little circle right here shows you exactly where you're looking. This is up here, right? Uh, maybe I want to find this. Well, obviously it's over here. So I can very quickly figure out exactly where something is on the uh, map just based on touching or clicking on this little clicker and searching for it. Obviously, there's my little star right there. You can see the um, circle as it circles that, uh, which makes it very easy and convenient to find certain things on your texture map with just the click of the mouse. One of the things that I like to do is enhance the textures of models that I already have. For example, this is the X-Wing from the Video Copilot Star Pack. I have all of the textures. I can just drag this on here and notice that it immediately go, goes ahead and puts it on there. It is in real time, so I'm going to go ahead and change that to paint layer. Okay. Now, maybe I want to look at it from the side, bring it in a little bit closer, uh, go to my text, and if I just change this to, say, Sensei, uh, I can go ahead and put my own moniker right on the side there. And if I come over to the other side, I can do the same thing, right? So now I have my um, my own personal X-Wing, right? But I can do more than that. Um, let's say, for example, I add a new layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and make it an overlay layer. I'm going to use a brown mud color and the paintbrush. And, you know, maybe I just want to paint some more dirt and stuff on here. Maybe a little bit here on the side, okay. Uh, maybe on this side too, right? You know, that kind of a thing. You know, just because, uh, you know, I want to add my own flair to that, right? Look at how good that looks too, right? Maybe I will uh, um, 
Let me bring the size of the paintbrush down just a little bit, and I'll just sort of cover the front and maybe a little bit of the nose on this side and on that side. But you get the idea. Now I can go ahead and save this as my own personal texture and then bring it into HintFilm. So here I am in HintFilm with this particular model. I go ahead and open it up. I save that base color as J. And there it is. I might go ahead and bring in the uh, normal map as well. And I think I'll bring in the metal as the specular. Go ahead and change this to Cook Torrents and Planner and bring it in. Then I can bring it into a um, project file and see what it looks like. Having brought it into the project file, you can now see the texture of it. You can see my name on there. You can see the dirt on the texture, right? Oh, it looks so nice. I love it. So this is basically the idea behind what you can do with Armor Paint. Um, if you're interested, there's a link in the description below. Do me a favor and like this video, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon for notification. And as always, thanks for watching.